Hey everyone, it's Bernicia, aka Kanye Flybug, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, and if you're old here, welcome back. Please take this time to like, share, and subscribe, and let's get right into this video. On October 17, 1941, an elderly retiree named Philip Peters was found dead in his West Moncrief Place home from a skull fracture. Authorities came for a wellness check when his worried neighbors had reported him <coughs> missing after not showing up for dinner. When they arrived, Peter had been beaten to death and there were no suspects. And at the time, his wife Helen had been hospitalized for weeks. So she was ruled out as a suspect, and all of their children were grown and moved away, so they were also ruled out as suspects. So since he was all alone, his neighbors decided that they would send him meals and give him companionship until his wife's release from the hospital. So one evening when he didn't come for dinner, they became worried and they called authorities. His murder was so savage that they found bloodstains on the ceilings and other wounds of the home. And this baffled detectives for almost a year because Peters had no known enemies and they couldn't find a motive anywhere. Finally, in July of 1942, authorities finally got to him. Because Helen was alone at this point, she had to hire help to manage the home. And so, um, several maids had since been hired and quit because they heard strange noises in the home. And so one day, um, Helen and one of her housemates um, heard some strange noises and one of the maids saw one of the hallway doors close slowly and a thin white hand disappear and footsteps running away. So terrified, thinking that she had just seen the ghost, she informed Helen and they called police. But when they came, no one was there. So because of this incident and because of the murder of her husband, two officers, Roy Blossom and Bill Jackson, were assigned to be on the lookout for a ghost or for an assailant of some sort. So <clears throat> On July 30th, they finally saw for themselves. And so they rushed in to investigate, and they went upstairs, and when they opened this, this door, they saw a pair of legs ascending into the ceiling. And so moving quickly, one of the officers grabbed onto the legs and pulled. And out fell 59-year-old Theodore Conies. Conies had been living in the Peters attic since the night of the attack. And later, one of the officers would describe Conies as the strangest human being he had ever seen in his life. Because Conies was a scraggly, rail thin man, and he had grayish, baggish, baggy skin that fell off of him. So he looked odd, they arrested him, and later he confessed to the murder of Philip Conies. A little background on Theodore Conies. So he grew up poor, and he later became homeless in his adult life when he was unsuccessful in keeping full-time jobs. And so he had also known Peters as a child. He knew him through the guitar club because he, uh, Peters was also a former musician. And so he broke into his home and he told officers that didn't recognize him and so he figured he you know of course had changed in 30 years because he hadn't seen him since he was a child but he recognized him immediately but he startled him and so on a spur of the moment decision he took a coal shaker and bashed his head and bludgeoned him to death then he hid in their attic until he was found newspapers would later dub him the Denver Spider-Man of Moncrief Place because one of the officers had stated that a 
man would have to be a spider to stand it up there so long. The reason for him saying this was when they went to investigate the attic. He was staying in a 27 inch by 57 inch space in the attic. And while he resided up there, he had hung his feces in different compartments and urine and of course he had his own personal odor because he hadn't been bathing and so it caused the officers investigating to merely want to vomit because it smelled so bad up there. So anyway, later <laughs> later Coney was convicted. He was sentenced to convicted for murder and he was sentenced to life in prison at Canyon City Penitentiary. And he stayed there until he died May 16th of 1967 at the age of 84.